there was this American comedian on. He did a couple of impressions. He did a brilliant David Bowie. But he also said about Bob Dylan, you sound like you're doing the vacuuming. And anyway. <laughs> everybody and welcome to another episode of that's on your files my name's john his name's andy mm -hmm. love peace and harmony love peace and harmony oh very nice very nice very nice very nice but maybe in the next world more on that later but first we are contractually obliged to listen to a song andy what have you got for us uh a band called the war on drugs familiar yes you've you have listened to their stuff before or just know of their existence i know their existence and i got a feeling i've listened to an album of theirs but i cannot remember so it didn't you know i perhaps was distracted by uh um a wild fox or something i don't know but um it didn't <laughs> uh it didn't sit and i don't know why i can't say that i didn't like them i can't say i did i just I've got this feeling I've heard some of their stuff, but I couldn't tell you what. So, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. It's foggy, like old London town. <laughs> Fair. Well, I have a KEXP performance uh, by those guys. Mm, excellent. And it is a song called Red Eyes. Let me know what you think. Well done. Just had to say it. Tank top. This is a nice start. It's got that um it's got quite an old school feel to it. Now I'm not an expert on this person stroke band, but it's bringing to mind like Tom Petty. I got that feel, I think. Yeah, sort of Americana. Yeah, it's a nice sound. Um I started with the synths, I was like, uh, but then it's transitioned into a piano sounding which is really nice and you've got really pleasant guitars with the, the acoustic and the electric always sound great together um yeah good start Use my 
That was nice. And I'm you just heard the guitar sort of pick up the change the the effect. I'm glad he introduced the the step up with a woo, which is good. Um, <laughs> that guitar's got almost a dreamy sort of tone to it. Um, a little bit sort of almost wistful, I don't know. It's making me feel, I'm not really catching the lyrics, um, it's almost making me feel like I'm driving down a dusty road. It was proper Americana, isn't it? But so yeah, that's what the pictures I'm getting. And I'm noticing his voice now and then, it slides into almost Dylan territory, and the way he's saying stuff, which is interesting. I like this, this sounds really nice. Um, yeah, good stuff. It's, it is old school. It's kind of like 80s, almost, American rock. Um, not not the hair stuff, obviously. But yeah, the old school stuff. This is all right. was fun um i have to say when it started looking at him i was almost expecting like neil young stuff but it certainly you know it wasn't really at all um yeah i quite like the sort of there was almost a a sweepy grandness to the music and the chord changes were very uplifting um I guess within the lyrics, it's almost like a, there's a quite reflective bit and then it's almost like a statement bit, like this is how it's going to be or, you know, I'm not going to take this shit anymore or, or whatever he was singing, I don't know. But it conveyed a little bit of sort of uplifting, almost hope musically to me. Um, but this is a lot of fun. Um, and it did have that sort of retro sound to it, which is nice. And... Before I forget, it was a live performance and they absolutely killed it in terms of the performance. 
Um, I liked his voice, perhaps because it reminded me of Dylan in places. Yeah, all good stuff. All right, let's get back and talk with Andy. So you're back, eyes clear. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. what what do you what do you make of this and the performance there on KEXP? Okay, so first off, we have to address the immediate issue in this performance within the first five seconds, and that is tank top warning. Um, yes, that. The drummer was fashioning that knitted diamond padded menace to in the 1970s to young boys everywhere. They always seem to be a present from an auntie and you <laughs> had to wear it. Um, yeah, never cool back then, despite the efforts of Marky e. Smith, jumper clown indeed. Anyway, moving on. So the song starts and initially there are some sweeping sort of synth noises that had me a little worried. Um, but that soon passed. Um, there was an instant familiarity to this in terms of feel and sound not the tune itself but um seeing the lead singer i realized i had a subconscious expectation of neil young <laughs> um, which didn't appear which you know um isn't a good thing or a bad thing because uh, i quite like some of his stuff but there you go that's beside yeah. the point and for another episode so yeah i got um like really much from the off like that Americana sound from this straight away. That sweet coupling of the acoustic and electric guitars. Why do bands not do more of it? Because it always sounds so great. But uh, the synth happily changes to a piano sound effect and um, they start going away and he's singing and uh, I get this cliched, very cliched mental image of driving down a very long, dusty road just feeling all right with the world. Um, <laughs> it sort of put me in these straight away, this song. Um, now, I'll, I'll mention it later on. I have no idea what he's singing. doesn't really matter. I've got my own mental soundtrack to this. But um, there's a real old school feel to this song. Um, not that I know his work or him pretty well, but like the first name that popped into my head as listening to this was Tom Petty, straight away. It's just an impression of that. Um, the singer, the main man, he does a brief flourish on his guitar, just a, in the sort of first verse, and the tone of it is just beautiful. Yeah, it is. Um, and then after a few more lines, you just for like you have like about a half a second warning. You get that sort of feedbacky static from whatever effect or pickup that he's just flipped, and then um, with a helpful woo and a <laughs> yes. um, and a, a quick drum fill. The band launches into another gear and there's more lovely guitar, which has a very, has a really dreamy quality to it. And it's starting to sound like sort of 80s rock to me now. It's But it's really not, not the, the hair metal shit or any of that. The yeah. nice stuff, you know, the comforting, nice stuff. Not exactly challenging or anything, but just really, really nice. Um, I noticed with a, with certain short phrases that um, the singer is going out, his his voice is starting to sound to me more and more like Bob Dylan, um, which again is a bonus for me. Just the way he's, mm. you know, the way he scans the lines, the way he's sort of uh, it goes up know, at the it, end sometimes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's I have told you this before, but many, many, many years ago on Saturday Night um, Live, which was like a British version, trying to do. Saturday Night Live in America, Ben Elton hosted it. There was this American comedian on, he did a couple of impressions. He did a brilliant David Bowie, but he also said about Bob Dylan, you sound like you're doing the vacuuming. <laughs> anyway, right. So we then get into this quite a reflective passage, which is almost obligatory in a song like this. Um, the simple drums keep it going. And the guitar sounds like it's, so sort of Jenny rocking on a porch, thinking about that girl that lost summer. Um, and then there's another woo, and we're back driving again in the car. Yeah. And the sun is shining, and there's horses racing alongside in a field by the road, and they're like children welcoming home a returning family member. You can tell at this point I'm getting really swept up in the whole musical romance and nostalgic impression of the whole thing. Um it does have, um, at this point in the song, a real grand sweeping sense to it with some really uplifting chord changes that just made me feel 
that everything will be all right in the end. It just that's how it communicated to me. I haven't got a clue at this stage what I will call him Bob Petty is singing about. Um, it could be Dutch Elm disease or his lack of available satisfaction, but I don't care. Um, it has created a small TV movie in my head, and I'm okay with that. Um, another wonderfully sounding guitar part takes us out of the song. Um, I just got really swept up by this, and so I didn't really concentrate too much on the intricacies of the song. I just found it really endearing, really comforting. It was a superb performance, and I did, at the end, I was like, I had to say, oh, yeah, they're live as well. It's just brilliant. I absolutely love this. Awesome. Again, it's nothing new or groundbreaking. It's just, yeah. But it's so, it's so goddamn true to what it, the sound that it's going for that it sounds yeah, like yeah. music yeah. from the genesis point of those genres. That's how true to that sound it is, right? Yeah. It's just sounded brilliant. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome, man. I'm really, really glad you liked it. Yeah, they are um, a great band. Uh, I'm a, For this genre, this sort of, sort of Americana stuff, this is one of my favorite bands uh, that, that's out there doing it. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you liked it. I will uh, get into the band some now. Mm. They are um, an American rock band from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. They for just up the road. They formed in 2005. Uh, the band consists of Adam uh, Grandusil on vocals and guitar, David Hartley on bass guitar, Robbie Bennett on keyboards, Charlie Hall on drums, John Natchez on saxophone and keyboards, Anthony LaMarca on guitar and Eliza Hardy Jones on percussions and keyboards. Their sound has been described as indie rock, heartland rock, neo psychedelia, and Americana. Uh, founded by close collaborators Black Grandusil and Kurt Vile, uh, The War on Drugs released wow. their debut uh, studio album, Wagon Wheel Blues, in 2008. Vile departed shortly after its release to focus on a solo career. Which which left Grand Seal as the lone serving band, uh, the the lone band member who is still like the from the original lineup that's left here. So, um, the band's second album, Slave Ambient, was released in 2011 to favor favorable reviews uh, and a lengthy tour. The band's third album, uh, on which this features, was called Lost in the Dream, which I thought was interesting when you chose the word dreamy to describe <laughs> the sound. Um, it was released in 2014, and the album was re released to widespread critical acclaim and increased exposure. This is really the one that took them, um, the, the, the one before this got attention, this kind of took them to the next level. Um, signing to Atlantic Records, the six-piece band released their fourth album, A Deeper Understanding, in 2017, which won the Grammy Award for Best Rock Album at the 60th Annual Grammy Awards. Uh, the band released their fifth album, I Don't Live Here Anymore, in 2021. Uh, the track uh, the track features on the uh, this track features on the aforementioned Lost in the, uh, Lost in the Dream and the recording session, the, the recording session, which took place over a two year period, was characterized by Grand Ducille's anxiety and second guessing with him remarking, I started going off the rails a little bit in my own head, getting a little too sucked in. The album's lyrical themes were influenced by the loneliness and depression Grand Ducille faced after he finished touring. Uh, the music on Lost in the Dream is inspired by 1980s rock, as well as Americana and Krautrock. Artists who have been cited as influences on the album's overall sound include Bruce Springsteen, Tom Petty, Bob Dylan, The Waterboys, Spaceman 3, and Neil Young. The, so I think you've covered at least a, wow. <laughs> a lot <laughs> of those. Um, I didn't get a spaceman three from that. I have to say, yeah, <laughs> no, well, there's other there's songs in the album. Yeah, obviously. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, wow. <laughs> well, that's really interesting. Um, that is really interesting. Yeah, yeah. I it's mean, a, it's interesting. Just, I'm not crazy, crazy, but he he did look at you know, if he grew his man shops, he you know he would have looked like Neil Young a lot. Oh think, yeah, you know? yeah, definitely, without question. You can see hear he it did, and, and see without it. the. We have the whiny voice. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> and instead more of the <laughs> vacuum voice, as you described earlier. <laughs> the album sound is characterized uh, by synthesizers, keyboards, horns, and ambient guitars. The album debuted at number 26 on Billboard 200 and received universal acclaim from critics upon its release, appearing on and topping numerous end-of-year lists 
of the best albums. Five promotional radio singles were released. Red Eyes, which we just listened to, Under the Pressure, Burning, Eyes to the Wind, and Ocean in Between the Waves were the names of those tracks. On Metacritic, it holds a score of 86 out of 100 based on 40 reviews indicating universal acclaim. Pitchfork's Stuart Berman gave Lost in the Dream a Best New Music designation and remarked that the album is loaded with songs whose greatness is revealed slowly, where the simplest, most understated chord can blow a track wide open and elevate it from simply pretty to absolutely devastating. All Music's Fred Thomas called Lost in the Dream, The War on Drugs, Dream Nation, or, or Disintegration. The, the and wrote of the album, it's a near flawless collection of dreamy vibes, shifting moods and movement, and stands easily as Grand Du Seal's finest hour so far. Dan Caffrey of Consequence of Sound felt that uh, that over repeated plays of the that found that after over repeated plays of the album, one gradually realizes that Grand Du Seal is discovering the problems of his life, not figuring them out or even reflecting on them. This all makes for an album that truly sounds like it's like it's coming to life. Ross Horton of Music OMH uh, called Lost in the Dream a tender, inviting, consoling, comforting record that you'll play again and again, stoned or not, and perfect in every way. <laughs> and based on uh, the hundred uh, based on the 139 year end top 10 list compiled by Metacritic, Lost in Dream was the most critically acclaimed album of 2014, appearing on 54 lists and being named first on 13 of them. And last year, the album was ranked 103rd, it was ranked the 103rd greatest indie rock album of all time by Melophobe. So, lots of accolades thrown at this yeah, album. It's good interesting. stuff. Interesting. I'm glad that other people have said about this dreamy quality. I just thought perhaps I was... You know, had some bad cheese beforehand, but yeah, I'm glad that they they got it as well. No, um, I think it's it. It really he wanted to write this album to capture the sort of um odd headspace he was in with all the depression and anxiety that yeah. he was going under after that that long touring, and then probably the weight of the world on his shoulders to create something that met the hype and groundswell they had coming off of that. Um, and he did. He managed to do it, which is a really tall fucking order right um but it took him two years to get it done and um and he came out on the other side all the better for it so the lyrics are come and see where i witness everything on my knees you beat it down to get to my soul against my will anyone could tell us you're coming baby don't mind leave it on the line leave it hanging on a rail come and ride away it's easier to stick to the old surrounded by the night surrounded by the night and you don't give in but you abuse my faith losing every time but i don't know where you're on my side again so ride the heat wherever it goes i'll be the one to care woo as you noted uh the chorus you're all i've got wait don't want to let the dark night cover my soul well you can see it through the darkness coming my way well, we won't get lost inside it all again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On my ride. Or pardon me. Oh, my ride. No one sees me when it when I'm right here waiting. I don't mind that I'm here. I hear. Throw the big weight of your mind against it. I would keep you here, but I can't. Oh, I'm trying to see the right way. I don't see it anywhere I come, babe. Yeah, woo. Again, as you noted. Lost on your sea again, the easy way to cover my sin. Don't want another dark time, think to myself. Yeah, I want to get lost inside it all. You're on my way. Well, I can't see it, the darkness cover my mind. Well, we can hear the voice war the voices war inside. Yeah. They won't let they won't get lost inside at all. You're on my way. Woo. And those are the lyrics. And it definitely sounds like the lyrics of a, of a man who is in his own head and has some some dark things going on there, some dark thoughts. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a Black Dog song, isn't it? But yeah. um, there is that element of hope. He's kind of personalizing hope in the form of who he's dressing. 
So you can knows? always feel the hope building in the music too at times, um, which is a really great way to accent or accentuate and convey the the sort of feeling behind the song or the mood behind the song, right? It's another deceptively simple song that um, actually is very rewarding when you listen to it, my thought. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Well, that's the war on drugs. Maybe some more of them in the future since you took to this so well, and they are a really great band and deserve some shine. So uh, appreciate you giving this a listen, man. Thanks so much. Yeah, I loved it. Everybody out there in the listening audience, let us know what you thought of this song and this band, this performance. If you agree with John, um, maybe some other artists that it reminded you of. There's probably plenty out there, uh, even though we listened quite a few. Um, also, please feel free to like, share and subscribe if you'd be so inclined. I'm trying to grow the channel and can't do it without you. And we greatly appreciate it. All that out of the way, John and I hopefully will see y'all and maybe some more on the next episode of The Audio Files. See you later, guys.